Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to another Shamshir Sound video. My name is Ali Nadam, and today we're going to be going over all the settings you need to know in FL Studio's rendering options. So this is in FL Studio 20, the latest version, and I was meaning to make this video, especially now that they dropped a few new options in this latest update. And so everything you need to know, we're going to cover very quickly. We're rendering here a kind of two bar little upriser uplifter and I want to show you everything you need. So first thing is the mode. We can choose between song selection or pattern. Now song selection is what I've highlighted here. We can see here at the top it says song. But if you want to render just a pattern, that's going to be useful for you. But I don't have any pattern here. So most of the times you guys are going to be using song selection instead of pattern. The second option is tail. Now there are a few different options and Cut remainder is great for rendering samples where you don't want any extra time added. If I just want this sample to be the two bars and that's what I want, then I'm going to go ahead and hit cut remainder and that will keep it two bars long exactly what we see there. Nothing more, nothing less. Next, we see one that says leave remainder. Now, leave remainder is for tracks where maybe you had a bit of reverb playing. Maybe there was a bit of endless smile or something, some sort of wetness or, a you know, some sort of effect generating a tail, a delay. And if we had that right, it would have kept going on and on. Um, and if we rendered it like this, it would end abruptly. So leave remainder would let that fade out however long that effect was going for. Uh, and then after you can decide when you want to cut that. I would leave remainder if you have like a big trail to the end of your song and you haven't dictated where that end may be yet. And the last one is a bit more sophisticated. It's called wrap remainder. Now wrap remainder is cool if you are rendering a sample or a loop that has an effect on it, like a reverb. And the reason for that is that, you know, when you play something with like uh, reverb or wetness, maybe a loop, um, the wetness really doesn't kick in immediately. You know what I mean? Like, and it's hard to kind of give you an example, but you know, when you play a loop and the loop doesn't sound seamless, it doesn't sound like when it's coming to the end that it uh, begins the same way. Rap remainder will take the effect and I'll post a screenshot. It'll post uh, the effect. It'll put the effect back into the uh, beginning of the sample. It'll mix it in such that that effect, whatever you had, if it was a delay or a reverb or whatever, seems seamless and it uh, will loop much more effectively. So that's a bit more sophisticated, but most times you'll use leave remainder or your cut remainder if you just want to render what you've highlighted. And again, this will render what you've highlighted, but a bit more if there is a space or if there's an effect or whatever it might be. So we'll leave that there. Of course, we have the different options here. And guys, you can render things simultaneously. Remember that you don't have to render MP3 and then this. It does matter the order because of your mastering. That's a different topic because, you know, you can't render your I wouldn't render 32 bit float your project without dithering. I would recommend do a 24 bit dither and take that to MP3. But of course, you can render things at different options. So if I was doing like if my limiter already had 24 bit uh, dithering option, then I would render this as 24 bit and I would render an MP3 as well. Here, I just want to do a 32 bit float and uh, I've done videos on this, but I'll probably cover this again. 32 bit float is great for keeping your samples to yourself. 32 bit float doesn't need any dithering. 32 bit float has the highest headroom and the highest bit rate and it's going to be great for rendering stems. But of course, your finished master product, a dithered 24 bit would be great. Um, or a 16 bit dithered would be another option. Here they added a new feature in FL Studio, you can see it has stereo mono merged, this would be useful if you guys want to, um, maybe you don't want to control the knob on the master, and you want to listen how it sounds uh, merged in this way, everything will be merged in the middle, you could see if there's stereo problems, uh, if there's phasing issues, if things maybe were too wide. Um, you'll know if they're too wide, if they go invisible, if they're gone, and you can't hear them, you're losing some of the detail when they're merged. So that's a good feature I like that's been added. If we move down, we see here the resampling quality and the resampling quality is going to be dictated by your sampler channels and what you're doing with those sampler channels, the uh, time stretching, the pitch automation, the pitch bending. Um, I always leave it on the highest quality option. And I don't find that it renders much slower. Actually, uh, my real time FL studio is set at six point Hermite. And a lot of people like to use the same settings that they use 
in FL Studio. But again, you know, experiment and see what works for you. This is my setting in FL Studio, and that's what I render at when I'm actually rendering. High quality for all plugins. This, from my experience, is generally for FL Studio plugins. I don't think it affects other plugins, but I leave it on. Um, there's also one that says disable uh, channels polyphony limit. And I'm careful with this one. I don't generally enable this because if I've dictated a limit inside of like a uh, massive or something, I don't want it maybe telling that synth, hey, you know what, do 99 voices or something. Uh, I, I don't want that. I want those same limitations that I'm using in the project. Next, we have the dithering. And the dithering, if you're not certain what it is, I'll give you a quick recap. When you guys are working in FL Studio, you're using uh, plugins that are using like 32-bit floating point audio. And there's a lot of headroom. It's okay if you're clipping with that audio. But this dithering is the final package that you get, right? The final package that you get that's a 24-bit wave. It needs to be rounded. It needs to be dithered. And dithering applies in the imaging world too with computer graphics. Dithering will take the colors that it needs. Okay, let's choose the palette. Like imagine this, I'll give you an example. Imagine if uh, you know, I had a, an artist have a palette of a thousand colors and then I told him, take that image and, and do it with a hundred colors. He could choose a hundred random colors, but if he chooses the best 100 colors, it'll look uh, dithered. It will look better, more suitable. Um, so dithering is important anytime you go from your project to a 24-bit or a 16-bit. And when I dither to 24-bit, I then make my MP3. Next, we have these, uh, the save playlist markers. So these two will save uh, markers that you've put on your playlist or also the loop markers. So loop markers should indicate a little orange arrow at the beginning of this sample. There's also save note markers, which I haven't experimented with personally. Um, there's split mixer tracks, which will, if you guys have like 10 tracks that are being used, it will split them up individually. And then you can take those tracks, throw them into FL and start mastering. So if you guys want to bounce your stems, that's useful. I always leave this on trim PDC silence. What is that? Plugin delay compensation. So plugin delay compensation is when you have your plugins that don't use zero latency and trim PDC silence will make sure that even though you had huge plugin delay compensation, that your samples start right away. Not that there's a 10 millisecond delay or a 20 millisecond delay. So leave that on. Um, most cases you want that on. Of course, there's these guys too which is important if you don't want your insert effects, which are all these effects, or if you don't want your master effects, you can turn that off, but you're gonna want that on. The only time I usually turn this off is maybe I'm doing stem mastering, and then I would do something like that. So that gives you an idea. Last but not least, there's the tempo information. So your project tempo, if you guys are bouncing like a sample. So if you were bouncing a sample, you could do like 24 bit with the dithering, I'm going to keep this 32-bit float because I don't have a limiter or anything here. Um, I'm going to hit cut remainder and I would hit this as well. Save tempo information will save your tempo inside of it. So if someone else opens that sample and they hit detect tempo, it'll say, hey, this sample was provided with some information saying it's 128 BPM. So that wraps it up for this video. I'm going to render this and bring it back into FL so you can see the finished product, what happened. So you can see here is the finished uh, sample. It's been rendered. It does have some loop points. These are the red markers that are there. Uh, it's no longer than the sample that we uh, wanted to render. It just cut it right off. And if we go to detect tempo, it says here this sample came with tempo information embedded. So I hope you guys can uh, take some of these tips and incorporate it. If you guys had any questions regarding rendering, feel free to comment below. Let me know what you guys think and uh, what your personal rendering settings are if you guys have any tips of your own. If you guys enjoy this video, be sure to give me a like, smash that like button because uh, YouTube CEO is going up my anus and uh, anus is loose. So I'm going to need all the help I can get. Make sure you guys hit subscribe. We upload videos every few days and so you will get notified when the latest video is up and I love you all. Make some amazing gains. I'll see you soon. Take care.